Today, Nigeria's Super Eagles are facing the Black Stars of Ghana in the World Cup qualifying match. And of course, it has to do with Nigerians doing all their best. And Ghana, of course, um, they are winning. And qualifying is at a very, very crucial point right now. So the Babayara Stadium yesterday were filled with a lot of people as they watched the two teams uh, prepare and train. Uh, and so we're being joined by Adeni Adjishafe, our sportman of Trust Television. It's good to have you here. Yeah, <laughs> at least uh, today is a day day. We can't dodge it. We just have to face the music today. Today is a day day. Oh, we have to face this music, but it's not looking... Uh, no, it's looking... <laughs> let's, uh, I always want to be very positive. positive. I, first of all, Babayara Stadium in Kumasi, mm. uh, with all the, uh, I want to call it unnecessary um, match, uh, mind games and all that coming from Ghana and all that. Because first of all, when Ghana, Nigerian Super, uh, the Super Eagles, when they got to Ghana yesterday, we saw what the first impression, the video that we saw, they had to be jumping out from the plane as if it's not the Super Eagles. That's one. Two, um, the Ghanaians, uh, the way they are taking this issue is like really a war. <laughs> but uh, we are taking it as footballers, mm -hmm. uh, as in the, the, the players yeah. are taking it as just a game. But I love mm -hmm. the fact that Ahmed Musa, the captain, mm -hmm. actually agreed that yes, uh, is a war more than football, music, entertainment in all facets of life. But uh, he said something I really love. He said by Friday, no, by Tuesday, mm. by Tuesday next week, all this bruhaha from Ghana will have been over and Nigeria should be, will be smiling. And I just hope that that statement he made, they will really work towards it. Okay. Now also joining us uh, online or virtually, uh, we have sports journalist Amodia uh, Okulegbe, you know, uh, joining us via Skype. Hello, good morning and welcome. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right. So, uh, can you tell us what the team lineup is like and what Egwabong's plan to win the match is? Well, uh, I'm not a coach. I'm not coach uh, Augustine Egwabong. I will. I will only just give my own take on the lineup. Um, it's a tough game, just like my colleague has rightly pointed out. Uh, the Ghanaians talking tough. Uh, they understand that we have more better players. Now, don't disrespect to the Ghanaian team. We have more better players playing in big leagues in Europe. Uh, but if I really want to uh, take a peep into today's fixture, I think uh, we should be looking at our um, attackers, you know, our frontliners, because that was exactly what was missing. Uh, when we lost to Tunisia at the African Cup of Nations, we just couldn't break their defense to score because we were missing some of our strikers. But thank God we have Osime, we have Ojoin Gallo, we have Dennis, we have Ademola Lukman. So we have options up front. And I think the 4 3 3 formation suits Nigeria very well. So I would love to see Osime start. Then I would love to see Dennis on the right and Moses Simon on the left. That way we can really hurt them with the Enatrop playing right behind Osime because. If you remember the World Cup on the 17 World Cup that we won in 2015, Usime was the top striker. Ihena Chop played right behind him, and two of them got a lot of goals. Usime still holds that record of the most goals scored in a FIFA on the 17 World Cup 10 goals. So that could just be the joker for us this evening. I'm glad we have all of these players. <laughs> I mentioned uh, featuring for this uh, game with Ghana that we are playing without our key shot stopper, which is Maduka Okoye, due to obvious reasons, you know, um, his um, ear. <laughs> okay, that's why injury problems. Are all that. So, um, what do you think this will uh, do to us? Uh, because we have a replacement for him. Should we be worried uh, about taking on Ghana tonight? Well, uh, I don't think we should be worried. Um, it's uh, a rivalry that dates back to uh, the 50s, the 1950s. On head-to-head -head record, they have a better 
you know, win ratio than the Nigerian Super Eagles. You know, the, the rivalry is, is crazy. The Ghanaian talking top and the Babayara Stadium is one venue that uh, the Ghanaians have really, really triumphed over their opponents in, in the years past. But uh, that aside, the question you ask, um, Maduka Okoye, of course, is missing. He was uh, our number one during the African Nations Cup. But remember, before he came to the party, we had the likes of, you know, Francis Uzo. We had um, uh, Daniel Akwe. Then we had Ikechuko Ezenwa, who is who's, uh, the Nigerian professional football league goalkeeper. He's not in the team anymore. Now we have the Union Bank goalkeeper, John Noble. And remember the 2018 World Cup, it was Francis Uzo that was in goal for Nigeria. You know, so I don't think we, we should worry that Maduka Okoye isn't fit for this uh, encounter. Uh, we have capable hands in, in um, uh, Francis Uzor and Dania Kwee. I want to believe the coaching uh, uh, goalkeeper uh, uh, trainers would pick uh, Francis Uzor ahead of Akwee. For me personally, I would love to see Uzor is go. He has more composure as far as I'm concerned. He has more composure, more reflexes. Uh, maybe, maybe uh, Maduka Okoye is just a, a, a bit younger and a bit taller, you know. So, uh, I don't think we have issues in the goalkeeping area. Uh, tonight, what we should just be mindful of is not to lose against Ghana. A draw can set the pace for a win in Abuja next season. Okay, now let me direct this me question direct to uh, Adeni in the studio. Okay. Now, uh, we have a new kid in the, in the block, right? Uh, that's uh, Ade Mola Lukman, and he's set to debut, you know, uh, you know, when the match commences. Actually, it's not only him. We have uh, okay. Kikumi Amo, too. Okay. Amo is also there. Okay. But the fact that, uh, well, that's has to do with the coach. Yeah. The Guavon and uh, uh, Amunike will decide that because at times you might just say, okay, these guys are coming in, maybe they will feature them. But there is every tendency that... Uh, Lukman and Amaoko actually have a taste of football. Yeah. All right. So, but if they're featured, you know, eventually, do you think they would, you know, play well? Of course, well? they can. Those guys are, in fact, Ademola Lukman is, is a kind of player that you can't hold down when he gets the ball. Uh, mm -hmm. You see, in fact, uh, I really wish uh, that they would uh, put, put him in the second half uh, alongside Amo. Who knows? But really, if they are given the opportunity, they will showcase. After all, they are professionals. Mm. In fact, they want to prove to Nigerians that selecting them actually is not a fluke. Mm. So they know the business of being a footballer. So when you talk about debutants, you know, looking at the Ghanaian team, mm. it, it's not the team you would recognize when they, you see them on the field. There are mm. lots of debutants in the Ghanaian team as well. And, um, you know, these are young players, just like Amao and Ademola. We have the, the young players, the likes of Ayu will not be making it for this match and uh, a whole lot of black stars. And, um, you know, when you conflict, when you put them side to side, this is representing the motherland and the Ghanaian star representing the fatherland. So there's a lot of similarities and conflictions and all that. But, but how do you see this playing out? You know, fielding players that are very young, are debutants, and then we have a few other debutants too in the Nigerian team. First of all, uh, not uh, the issue of uh, paper. A lot of people have been talking about paper, about uh, antecedent of Nigeria meeting Ghana, the mm. beating of uh, <clears throat> 21 times, we beaten them 10 times, mm -hmm. and all this record. <clears throat> but the main thing is tonight. Mm. I'm not looking at the records. I'm looking at performance. And the mentality on Super Eagles right now is that we just have to win this. Mm. They've been spurred to action by the NFL president and the entire um, management, whatever they need. And they themselves, they know what is at stake. Mm. This is not about record now. It's about how we can qualify. We should write our name in gold that this set of Eagles are not the same set of Eagles that Ghanaians have been beating all this while. Mm. Despite the name, the list you mentioned from Ghana, despite all the antics Ghana have been bringing up, they are ready for this. Mm. And I think the entire squad, they know the business, and they are all in unison. Mm. They want to do this. Mm -hmm. And let's just believe in them. I just want Nigerians to believe that they will do it.
Okay. All right. Uh, let me talk to Omodia. Is it yeah, Omodia. Aware? Yes. Uh, now, uh, Bill Fred is a replacement of Bonky. Do you think he's a worthy replacement? Because uh, we have a report of Egwene saying that Bill Fred will not be missed. And I talked about Ego, you know, a while back. I hope, you know, we won't you know, hurt our chances of winning. Well, uh, I, I beg to differ uh, to what Egwene said about missing, uh, not missing NDD. We definitely will miss NDD, no doubt. NDD is a special player. You know, he's, he's one of the most consistent defensive midfielders in Europe, playing in the Premier League. I mean, uh, Leicester City, his club in the Premier League, they always suffer when he's not around, when he's not in the box, you know, defending. He has, he has you know, tons of uh, uh, stats, you know, in the uh, past seasons, best tackler, best interceptor, you know, amongst the best, comp competing with the best midfielder. So definitely we're going to miss him. But, you know, the makeup of every good team is the depth, the depth of the team. So if one player gets injured, there's a suitable and better replacement, so to say, uh, um, to, uh, to just match him. And we have a like-for-like -like player in uh, Frank Oyeka, who also plays in the Premier League for, for Brentford. He's a defensive midfielder. I've watched him a couple of times. He's strong on the ball. And we also have Innocent Bonke. Uh, he was with Marvel FF in Sweden, but during the January transfer window, uh, he moved to Laurent in, in the French League. On. Now, we understand that this is an African setting. The game is definitely going to be a very physical one. So we need, we need a very good defensive midfielder. And if Aguavon uh, knows his job very well, uh, of course, I expect him to, we can even do a double uh, a DM in, in Bonke and, and, and Franco Yeka. But we definitely will miss in the day. But I think uh, we have, we have a good replacement. It's just to tweak the formation a bit. Maybe put Oyeka in front of the defenders, then push Bonke a little bit up to support whoever is playing as the number 10 to help us see with the passes. Um, Omodia, we have all of this planning, and then at the end of the day, the interim coach has all of the planning to do, all of uh, the players to be sent on the pitch. But you've done some analysis uh, so far, so good. But it doesn't play out for Nigeria. But do you see us, you know, coming back to Nigeria? I don't want to sound pessimistic right now, but do you see us, you know, doing our best regardless of whether this analysis and the play out on the field you just analyzed um, take its space? Uh, like I said uh, in my opening, it's a tough game. It's going to be a big one. Now, when, when uh, games of this magnitude, sometimes, uh, you know, a lot of uh, sports and football followers will tell you uh, form is out of the question because it's a rivalry. You know, I spoke to a couple of uh, Ghanaian sports journalists yesterday trying to get uh, their perception of the game. And they told me that uh, they understand that Nigeria has a better team than they do at the moment in terms of personnel, players, they know. But what he said, that they have a, a, a team, they are not a bunch of individual players. You know, I don't know if that is a swipe on the Super Eagles, but um, the Babayara Stadium is a 40,000 capacity. And from reports that I got, the, the government of, uh, the, of Ghana uh, might just throw the gates open so that they'll have a mammoth crowd to come support them. So that way they can try to intimidate the Eagles. But the last couple of years, we have really metamorphosed into a very good side. The last time we played Ghana was in 2011. It ended, it ended in a draw. I do not see Ghana beating us today, regardless of the, the fans cheering for them, or the players they are going to line up, I do not see them beating us. But if it does happen that they beat us, it won't be more than a long goal. But I expect the Eagles not to concede first. Now, remember there's still a second leg in Abuja, you know, at the Mushuda Biola Stadium. So no matter what happens here, I feel the coaches, if I want to echo their thoughts now, I feel they will just go for maybe a draw, play a bit of a defensive approach, Try to force a draw out of the Ghanaians, maybe a score draw 
or a skull let's draw and come here in Abuja, then fire on all cylinders to get the goals. That's what I believe the coaches will do. But I stand on my word, Nigeria will not lose to Ghana tonight. I'm so confident of that. Quickly, Adeni, you know, uh, there are reports of uh, a plot by Ghanaians to destabilize the Eagles, you know, uh, with COVID-19. I don't, I don't understand. What's that all about? Well, uh, you just to understand the fact that um, when issue like this comes, a lot of uh, news will be flying around. Mm -hmm. uh, well, either true or false. Yeah. I believe the players are professionals. I believe the Nigerian country, that is the NFF, they know what to do concerning this. And I'm sure if that has happened, the news will have been out. Mm -hmm. So that did not happen. After all, yesterday, the Eagles actually trained. So uh, I'm sure the issue of COVID-19 is not at stake now. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's, not, it's not holding water. Mm -hmm. If it happened, mm -hmm. that news will have been at least uh, featuring out. Uh, for Super Eagles, they are professionals. For NFF, everything has been put in place. All that matters right now is the players to believe in themselves that really they are carrying over 250 million Nigerians on their shoulders. Mm. All they need to do to go there as real warriors that we are Nigerians. After all, we have never ever given up. That is spirit. Mm. So they should go there regardless of the record. I don't care. I don't care about the 49 or all those records that people are looking at. This is a new era. Let's do it. Mm. Prove to them that really you can fly higher than the stars. Hmm. The 250 people they are carrying on their shoulders, they had better drop it because <laughs> it's going to be very heavy. Uh, I, that's, that's my opinion, but we wish them all the best, yeah, you know. Definitely. But what we saw yesterday, the massive turnout, the sold out tickets, I think that's what's going to play out in Abuja. Hopefully. Here. Hope you'll be there. Hopefully, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you so much, uh, sports journalist Omodia Okulegbe, for you know, joining us and sharing your thoughts on this. My pleasure, my pleasure. So much, uh, sports uh, presenter, trustee via Denia Dishafe for also gracing us with your presence in the studio today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, all right, with that, uh, we've come to the concluding part of, uh, you know, uh, Daybreak on Trust TV. We appreciate you for taking time out to watch us from beginning to end. We'll be back again next week, yes, uh, on Daybreak. And tomorrow as well, you know, at uh, 8 a.m. on Daybreak Extra. I'm Dashan Husseina Usman. All right, and uh, don't forget, um, it will be a weekend of packed, of, uh, packed full Activity. of activities. So... <laughs> You know, security is everybody's business. If you see something, say something. And for more updates, please check us out on our social media handles and you get all of the information that you want to get about Trust TV and all of our programs as well. I am Martia Umar. Thank you for being a part of the Daybreak.